Hey everyone, I'm back with another video. I know it's been uh, quite some time since I've done one of these, but uh, today we're going to be learning everything you need to know about MIUI 12 uh, based on Android 10 and uh, everything from, you know, the bare basics of inserting a SIM card, connecting to Wi-Fi, to, uh, you know, making customizations and getting the most out of your device. Now, I know you probably saw the, the, the length of this video and you're probably thinking, oh, geez, I'm not going to sit through all that. Uh, don't stress. You don't need to watch the whole thing. I'm going to uh, add some timestamps. It'll be down in the description. And uh, you can just skip to the bits that you want to see and uh, or just watch the whole thing. I highly recommend. If you have the time, it is absolutely great to learn everything you need to learn about these as uh, it's just going to make your day-to-day -day life with it a little bit easier. So uh, to get started, what we're going to do is probably the most basic thing and get a SIM card in it. And uh, we're also going to put a memory card and I'm going to show you how you can get that set up. So uh, let's firstly grab our SIM tool. Box has one of these. Now you'll notice it pops out like that. Be careful not to destroy the little grommet. And uh, this is our SIM tray. You'll notice that uh, we can either put two SIMs. So you can have a nano SIM like this and then another one here. Or you can have a SIM and a memory card, which is what we're going to do right now. Pop this memory card in. I actually don't know if this one works, but we'll find out. Uh, so I'm just going to slide that in. Got to keep it the same way. It often tells you which way it's supposed to go. If it doesn't feel right, don't force it because it might break something. Anyway, so um, as you can see, we've got a notification here. Samsung SD card has been connected. So I'm actually going to double tap on that. That uh, should take us into... Yep, yeah, oh, let's recognize it straight away. Now, if it does ask you if you want to set up your memory card, uh, it will give you two options. Um, this is so if like it's a brand new card and it hasn't been formatted. So it'll ask whether you want to set it up as portable storage or internal or adoptable storage. For the most part, I recommend using portable. This means that if you take the memory card out, it won't break things. But if you happen to have a device that has a very small amount of internal storage, so like 16 gigabytes or something along those lines, uh, using adoptable or internal storage will kind of extend your internal storage uh, at the expense of a little bit of performance, but it's it's worth doing. Uh, now you can see that we do have a uh, service here. We have um, decent signal and we're also connected to Wi-Fi, but I will show you how we connect to Wi-Fi. So we'll swipe down, tap on settings, go to Wi-Fi. Now I'm already connected here, but if I were to connect to another network, tap on it, enter your password, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you can also long press on a network, uh, or actually you just tap on this one here, and you can also uh, see more info and you can also forget the network or modify it if, if you need to for whatever reason. Um, I only forget the network if say I configured it wrong or I don't want to connect to it anymore. Uh, so that's all pretty straightforward. So um, uh, I've just, uh, let's head back to the lock screen because I kind of breeze through that. So when you just press the power button, this is what you get. This is your lock screen. You'll see if there's any new notifications, they'll appear here. They only appear until you unlock the phone. I'm not a huge fan of this behavior, but it is what it is. Um, I can understand why they do that, but uh, your notifications will still be uh, available once you unlock the phone. Um, now, the other thing to keep in mind is that there are a few shortcuts down here. Uh, there is a quick menu. Uh, you can toggle the Mi Remote, which is the, uh, if, if your device supports an IR blaster, and a lot of Xiaomi devices do support that. Uh, you can control a TV or uh, air conditioner straight from the side menu. And you've also got the flashlight here. Uh, now, uh, you won't be using this too much. Same goes with the camera. Um, what you'll find is once uh, you have the fingerprint sensor set up, which I'll show you a little bit later, uh, you probably won't even, uh, even be going or even looking at that lock screen. You'll be going straight in uh, to the home screen, which is exactly what we're looking at right here. Now, this home screen, I, I gather you're probably noticing that we have a few gray icons here. It looks a little bit different to our normal home screens that we normally set up. And the reason for that is that we've kind of adopted a new, I guess, methodology or, or process to, uh, to setting up devices now. There's been a few changes with the way that Android works. And uh, instead of actually pre-installing any recommended apps, so... For example, Weather Zone, absolutely fantastic weather app. Highly recommend using that, especially if, if you are in Australia. Um, but uh, on our custom version of Android here, um, it's not actually installed, but if we tap on it, we have this 
message here says this app is not installed. And you just hit search and then you hit install. And that's going to install that app. And um, yeah, pretty much everything on the home screen here, uh, if I put it here, it means that it's an app that I highly recommend and I've organized things in a specific way that makes sense. And I will get into this a little bit later, uh, but uh, for now, I'm just gonna breeze through installing all these apps. I'm just gonna go left to right, bottom, and top to bottom. Okay, so those apps have been installed now or are still installing in the background. Um, so uh, now we're going to get into some of the meat and potatoes here and we're going to start with the home screen. So the home screen uh, is our custom setup. Uh, you'll notice if you ever have used a Xiaomi device that's been imported from China or whatever, it looks completely different. It's full of junk. It's just a pain in the butt. I'm not a huge fan of it at all. But um, we make a number of uh, optimizations here to keep this as close to stock Android as possible. Keep it really simple, keep it lean. And also we include this very important setup guide here. Uh, and this pretty much takes us to uh, all the resources that you'll need to get going with your device. Now, um, we are running a custom launcher here. Now the launcher is basically this home screen interface. The whole thing is actually something that can be replaced. You can swap this out with other launchers like uh, I know Microsoft, for example, have their own launcher, which is quite different. Um, you know, it has like this search thing and a side menu and it's uh, got all this integration with Microsoft services. I'm not a huge fan of it personally, but um, Android is extremely customizable and we are using uh, a custom launcher called Lawn Chair. It's sort of a play on words. But if I go into, if I long press on some empty space here, I go to home settings. Oh, we're in back up here. Uh, this is the lawn chair uh, main menu. And uh, you have the ability to customize your themes, your icons, your colors. Uh, you have all sorts of uh, specific uh, options here. Like for example, you can enable notification dots, which I'm gonna actually turn that on right now. There you go. Um, we get this little warning, but that's fine. and uh, it's a very customizable system. And now we can see we have little, little dots here on the home screen. That's normally set up by default, but um, anyway. So there's a few little things that you probably need to know. So if you want to uh, just sort of quickly long press, I guess sounds kind of counterintuitive, you will see some quick actions. Um, so for example, on weather zone here, you have quick actions to go to the weather radar, uh, or if you just want to see your weather, you can do that. I don't use that too often, but what I do use a lot is the little icons here at the top. Um, this one here is edit. So if I want to rename this to something else, just weather, for example, I can do that. Um, you can set some swipe shortcuts, but you don't really need to do that for most people. Uh, you can also go into more info. So if you want to actually uninstall something or if you want to um, clear storage, so let's say it's an app that's malfunctioning, you can clear storage for that app and uh, it'll re reset it back to what it was when you first downloaded it um, just by going into the little info page. And uh, you can also remove the icon. The other thing you can do is if you drag and hold, you'll see you can either just remove it from the home screen or completely uninstall it like we did earlier uh, through the info page. Um, and then of course you can drag it on top of another app and then make a folder. And you can give this folder a name. There we go. Not a very good one, but then if I drag that out, then it, it, it removes the folder once it's back to one. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's just the real basics of organizing uh, your home screen. Uh, the other thing as well, you can also drag icons onto the other screen. If you just drag it all the way to the edge, it should let you go, there you go. And to access the app drawer, just swipe up. And you do also have a search here, so if you're looking for a specific app, you can just search for it and that'll come straight up. Um, you can also rename the apps in the uh, app drawer. And if there is an app that you do not want, um, but is not uninstallable, like for example, the Xiaomi file manager here, I do leave that there since it's required for some functionality. Uh, as you might be noticing, this is actually very deep loaded. There is basically no junk this. But um, if, I, uh, if I long press here, I should have the ability, yes, hide shortcut. So you can actually hide this from the uh, from the app drawer. 
so that you don't see it at all and you can keep it very clean if you like. Um, sadly, there's no folder functionality within the app drawer yet, but apparently that's coming soon in another update. So um, the other thing you may wanna do is uh, set up a widget and perhaps set up wallpapers. So you can do that by long pressing on empty space. Uh, so if I press on widget, for example, I can uh, drop a calendar widget or something. I mean, we already have one, but um, I just drop that there. This is a uh, ad blocker that we've got in the system. There we go, we've got a little, little widget for that. And uh, I can also remove that add something else, have a Gmail widget, notes widget. There's all sorts of little widgets here. Definitely check it out, there might be something handy. Saves you having to go into the app just to find out some basic information. And um, it's something I certainly use a lot. Now, you'll notice there's actually two home screens set up by default here. So I kind of like to organize things by a primary home screen and a secondary home screen. So. What that basically means is that everything that's like super important, I'm using this all day, every day, I keep on this main home screen. I really want to just be able to just hit that home button a couple of times and just get straight back to you know, my starting point. And basically, I just keep on my communication apps, um, you know, obviously my camera, it's here, photos, contacts, messages, browser, all the really important stuff uh, stays on the main home screen, the primary home screen. And then everything else kind of sits on the secondary one. And you'll see that I've, I've organized things here. I, wherever possible, I try to keep things, I guess, aligned in, in some sort of theme. So, of course, photos and camera, they're right next to each other. Um, you've got, uh, you know, weather zone and maps. They're kind of related if you're traveling, um, going to the beach. Uh, then you've got on the second home screen, we've got, uh, you know, all your, your utilities kind of kept together here for note taking and organizing your day. Uh, you've got a QR code scanner. That's another very handy one for... Um, you know, our current climate where we're all having to scan into every time we go to a restaurant or whatever, we've got to scan in and show our details. Uh, and then you've got some folders here. Uh, here's one for security and finance system, etc. So um, that's basically the, the home screen. And I will actually go into more detail about the apps themselves um, in, in later in this video. But um, yeah, that's just an introduction to the home screen. Now the next step is learning about the notifications. And the notification system in Android is pretty good. So if I swipe down here, uh, you'll see that uh, we have a few notifications here. Uh, we have an update available for our ad blocker. Highly recommend that we do that. Blockada, uh, that will pop up from time to time with some updates. I will actually do that another time. Um, you can see uh, weather forecast, it's got a backup happened. And you can swipe these away once you're once you're done with them. You swipe from left to right, that will dismiss it. But if you swipe from right to left, you'll notice it actually brings up a few extra options here. Um, you have this one as a settings button. Tap that, and you can uh, you can either turn off notifications completely for a specific thing, or you can go into more settings and you can customize how you're allowed to be notified by the specific app. It's really great if there's any apps that let's say you actually need to have on your device but it just has infuriating notifications. You can kind of uh, keep it under wraps by, by fiddling around with those settings. And the other option here is this, it's actually a snooze button. So you can snooze a notification. It's actually a really cool feature. So let's say you get a notification about something, but you just can't do anything about it yet. Let's say you're in the middle of work and you get a notification about something personal and you finish in an hour or so. Hit that snooze button, it's gonna come back in an hour or so. Um, I believe you can also customize this. Yes, you can. Uh, you can say two hours. I don't know why it's so cramped here. Um, and uh, that way it'll come back in two hours or you can say 15 minutes. Neat little feature. I don't use this too often, but every once in a while it does come in handy. And um, of course, oops, you can hit that undo if you wanted to. Uh, you can just swipe uh, notifications away and they will, they will stop uh, appearing in your notifications, which is fine. Of course, if you have an unread message, they'll still be in your messages. Uh, like for example, this one here, this is an unread message. Of course, I swiped the notification away earlier before the video, but uh, you know, that notification is still unread, but now it's read. Uh, so there you go. Now, the next thing in notifications is the quick settings. Now, um, as you can see, we have a just five toggles at the top there, and we have this little slider bar. 
So this is to adjust the uh, the brightness. Uh, automatic brightness will usually mean that you don't have to fiddle with this too much. You may need to you know tweak it every once in a while if uh, you just want it to be a little bit dimmer or a little bit um, brighter. But uh, the other thing is you can also expand the quick settings here, and it moves from showing only uh, I think it's was it, five to well twelve. So um, as you can see, we have quite a few notifications here. Every oh, quick settings, should I say? We have flashlight, we have do not disturb, we've got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, mobile data. These are all fairly self-explanatory. Um, screenshot is also another one here that's very handy if you need to take a screenshot of something. And uh, you can also do scrolling screenshots if uh, you have a lot of text you want to take a screenshot of. But I'm just going to tap on that. You can edit it, save. It's a very handy tool. By the way, just as a side note, uh, I think it's power and volume down. Oops at the same time, we'll take a screenshot. So uh, that, that does the same thing. Um, sorry, going back into quick settings here. Now, one thing that a lot of people don't actually notice is there's two pages to this. Uh, so if you swipe over, we have even more settings. And um, some of these are useful, some of them are, you know, you rarely use. But um, if uh, you want to modify anything here, just tap that edit button and uh, you can actually drag these things around by long pressing on them. Uh, or if you want, you can just get rid of them completely and just drag them down here and uh, then they won't appear. So if I get rid of ultra battery saver there, which is neat if you really, really need to save battery, but I basically never use it because the battery life on these is so good. As you can see, it's now not in the list and I can just put it back by finding ultra battery saver, plonk it there, done, and it's back. So uh, that's, a, that's a very neat uh, little, little bit of functionality that Xiaomi have added to MIUI 12. Um, it's been there for a while, but uh, they've just been adding little things here and there, polishing it up. Uh, you can also, I believe, tap on the time. No, oh, that's text back to the home screen. You tap on the time on the home screen, that takes you into the clock. Tap on the day, that takes you into the calendar. Um, but uh, this little button in the top right will take you into settings and that works pretty much anywhere. Very, very handy. And uh, that pretty much concludes the quick settings. Now it's time to go into the full blown settings. So if I tap on this uh, settings button here, this takes us into the, to the main settings app on the device. And uh, we'll start with uh, this little icon or notice here. So finish setting up your device. So if you pull the device out of the box, it'll say this. Tap on that and uh, you can sort of be guided through like a wizard of sorts where you can, uh, you know, copy data from another device if you're setting this up for, from scratch. Um, you can configure your wallpaper, etc. Now, if you have backups in your Google account, uh, you'll be able to access those as well, restore messages, etc., etc. Um, I find this tool to be pretty good, but there's still a little bit of polish that they can do. Um, I still often manually back up my SMS and I'll show you that a little bit later. But um, I'll kind of skip through this to be honest. I'll, I'll, I'll pass over this later. Um, let's remind me tomorrow. Uh, it's, it's fairly self-explanatory, uh, fairly straightforward uh, if you want to just get some of your data transferred. Now, if I go into About Phone, you can find out more about your device. We are on the Xiaomi Poco X3 NFC running on MIUI 12. Now, if you tap on MIUI version here, uh, you can actually check for updates uh, if you want to check for system updates. I usually say I don't want automatic updates uh, for the system uh, just because I like to wait maybe a week or two before I update. But you can check for them manually here. And uh, at the moment, we don't have any updates, which is fine. Uh, moving down, there is a system app updater. Again, I don't really bother with this because Pretty much all the system apps that you would use have already been removed. Um, I've replaced them with uh, Google or you know stock Android alternatives, and there's not really much to say there. It's just not something that's important in uh, in my eyes. Uh, moving on, we do have the ability to configure your networks. So here you can go into SIM cards and mobile networks. If you have multiple SIMs, you can choose which uh, SIM card you want for calls, which SIM card you want for data, 
Uh, you can turn mobile data on and off from here, uh, which by the way is also this one. Make sure that is blue, otherwise you won't get data if you go outside. Um, and uh, there's some advanced settings here. If you want to tinker around with that, you can reset your uh, mobile network as well if necessary. We've already covered connecting to Wi-Fi, but I'm going to show you Bluetooth. Turn on Bluetooth, and uh, if you have any devices ready to pair, and typically with, let's say you've got a, a vehicle uh, or if you've got a portable speaker or something, um, you'll probably just want to check the, the manual for that to see how you pair it. But but the, the vast majority of devices, you hold down the power button, especially if it's like a portable speaker or something, hold down the power button until it goes into pairing mode. Um, it'll need a little blink or beep um, or like flash red and blue. And then at that point, it'll appear in the, uh, the available devices here. Now, there's nothing obviously popping up. Um, with vehicles, uh, you pretty much just want to have a look through the settings on the vehicle's interface. And there's usually somewhere in settings and connectivity where you can pair a new device. Uh, otherwise, consult your manuals. Um, connection and sharing. Uh, the one thing you probably want to check out here, well, casting is, is kind of handy, but I'll get into that a bit later. Um, but portable hotspots. I know that uh, these make very formidable portable hotspots, especially with the great battery life that these devices have. And um, the one thing you probably want to set up is a password for your portable hotspot when you get around to using it. You can also change the Wi-Fi name here. This is what your, your device will appear as um, if you turn on your hotspot. And let's say you're on your laptop, this will come up as. You can change this to whatever you want. You can change it to, uh, you know, my Xiaomi phone or my Android whatever, and uh, this password is just some random nonsense uh, by default. And you can just type in whatever you like. Uh, just make sure it's got eight characters and you should be fine. But uh, just remember to change that. Otherwise, those, those really random passwords are just really annoying to type and it's very easy to get them wrong. Uh, now, one thing here is AP band. 2.4 gigahertz is the band that is compatible with pretty much everything, which is great. Uh, but if you want to get a little more performance, try the 5 gigahertz band. Uh, you'll find that uh, you'll get a little more performance over Wi-Fi. Probably not an issue for most people, but um, you know, if you have a modern device and you have really good signal, 5 gigahertz will be much quicker um, at the expense of a bit of range. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, so the rest here, you've got uh, access to your data usage. You can see what apps are using data, uh, mobile data that is. Uh, and you can keep on top of that. I do believe, uh, yes, you can also see your Wi-Fi data usage. And there is ways of actually setting limits on this too. Um, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, scrolling down, we have NFC, also known as near field communication. If your device supports this, uh, you can set up tap and pay um, through Google Pay, which is another thing I'll get to a little bit later. And of course, you can reset Wi-Fi and mobile networks and Bluetooth. If you're having problems, you can do that and it'll reset uh, your preferences and settings, which will get you out of trouble from time to time. Uh, moving on, we've got uh, a few options. I'll probably just let most people just go through these. Uh, there's, um, of course, sound and vibration. You can set your ringtones. You can set your um, you know, preferences for vibration and tap sounds and all that sort of stuff. Uh, one thing I will quickly touch on uh, here, though, is the do not disturb functionality. Do get questions about this pretty frequently. I do recommend uh, turning on a schedule. Uh, it's very frustrating to receive spam calls in the middle of the night and get waken up at 3 a.m. wondering what the heck's going on. Uh, so highly recommend setting up schedules so that uh, in the mid middle of the night it uh, automatically turns on. There is this default uh, setting here. You probably want to tweak it though. I would say if you're a night owl like me, you probably want to start it at so midnight and to stop it at about uh, 7.30. And uh, that way, during those times, your device is silent. Well, actually silent and do not disturb is slightly different. So silent uh, is, in, in this particular context, I believe it still vibrates. Do not disturb is completely silent and you don't even see notifications at all, which I, I would probably say silent is, um, is the better option. Don't know if it'll vibrate though. I have to actually check that one. Feel free to try it and, and let me know in the comments. Uh, so if I just hit that tick button there, there we go. Now we have a, a do not disturb rule 
And you can add multiple rules. So you can have certain rules, let's say timer one, you can rename this, I believe you can. Yes, uh, you can have it so that during the weekday, weekdays you have certain rules and then weekends, different rules. Um, you know, the sky's the limits there. So feel free to tinker around with that. Um, moving on, uh, the next thing that I wanted to quickly touch on was passwords and security. Uh, this is pretty important that you do get this set up and I did mention earlier about the fingerprint functionality in this device. Now, this is the Xiaomi Poco X3 NFC. So the fingerprint sensor is actually right on the power button here. So we're going to set that up right now. I'm going to go fingerprint unlock. And we're given a couple of options here as a screen lock. We need to set this up. Otherwise, we won't be able to use the fingerprint. Um, this is just as a backup so that if your device um, is not reg registering your finger. Let's say it's, you, you know, your finger's a bit sweaty. Uh, you've got to have some sort of uh, work around for, for that. So I'm going to go with the pattern. I find this a lot quicker, but most people I find prefer a pin as that's sort of more familiar. Um, I do recommend if you can go for six digits though, if you go for a pin. But I'm going to do a pattern in this instance, um, since I think everyone sort of works, you know, sort of has an understanding of how a pin works. Uh, so I'm just going to do a pattern. We're just going to do an L. Don't actually do this, by the way. It's a terrible pattern. Not secure at all. But there we go. Okay, so now it's going to ask us to do the fingerprint. So I'm just going to tap this sensor over and over. And you'll notice that I'm tapping it at like slightly different angles here. Now the idea is that you want to train the fingerprint sensor to get a really good reading of your thumb. Doesn't matter, you know, how you you hold it, it's gonna it's gonna read it. Um, and there you go. You can give it uh, you can give it a name if you want. So I'm gonna call this my right thumb. All right, done. Now here's a little tip. So if you ever find that your fingerprint reader works a lot of the time, but sometimes it doesn't work, you can go back into the settings and you can add a fingerprint again. And just repeat the process. I'm just going to fly through it. Come on, let's go. Now, what this actually does is that it, it feeds more data to the fingerprint sensor. And sometimes this is enough to get past any inconsistencies where it might not read your fingerprint every time. Uh, you can also do this, let's say if you, uh, you, know, you have issues when, the, when your thumb is a little bit sweaty, uh, you, can, you can just go back in and um, add your sweaty thumb and then it has a better reading of it when it's a bit sweaty. Uh, very, very um, handy thing to have. Of course, you can also add your other finger, but we're gonna, not going to bother on with that. Now, uh, there is this option here that a lot of people do miss, uh, fingerprint recognition method. Or maybe they don't understand what this means. So I'm going to lock the phone now. And uh, you're going to notice I'm just going to lightly tap this and boom, it is unlocked. No lock screen at all. Now, this is fantastic because it's super fast, but... I actually find this slightly annoying. Uh, far too often I put my phone in my pocket and I un accidentally unlock it because uh, my thumb just grazes the, the sensor ever so slightly and boom, it's unlocked. And uh, you always, always want to be locking your phone when you're not actively using it. Uh, it is really bad to just throw a phone in a pocket without locking it because next thing you know, you're calling people, you're you know, you're reorganizing your home screens in crazy ways and it's just really messy. So always, always, always lock your phone. But I do recommend changing this to press. Now what that means is that if I just rest my thumb here, it's not actually gonna do anything. I have to press this button and then it unlocks. Um, that just means that uh, I'm actually gonna try to unlock this phone if I do that. Okay, it's very rare that I would press the power button by accident um, in my pocket. Just you know, trying to keep my hands warm or whatever. So, um, you know, I highly recommend changing that to press to avoid those accidental unlocks and, um, and uh, yeah, avoid some potential chaos. And uh, just going to breeze through the rest of the settings here. Um, actually, there is one little thing here called second space. Um, this is pretty neat if you have uh, or want the ability to run multiple apps of the same app, but let's say different accounts. An example of this, let's say you have a small business, um, but you also 
you know, like to sell things uh, like secondhand on Gumtree. So uh, you can have two Gumtree apps, one for work and one for personal, so that uh, you can, you know, organize things that way and keep things separate. I won't go into that too much. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's a very, very cool feature in MIUI. And um, yeah, the, the rest of the apps here are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, digital well-being is one that I do recommend setting up if uh, you use to your phone too much like me. Uh, you can uh, you can configure that and set up timers and bedtime reminders and all that sort of stuff. So um, definitely check that out. The rest, uh, not really super noteworthy, but uh, I do recommend you have a look at everything regardless. All right, well, uh, we're moving on to the last part here. And uh, what we're going to be doing is going over all the apps on this device. And uh, we'll be explaining why we recommend uh, a lot of these apps and um, explain some of its functionality as well. So we'll be going from top to bottom, left to right. So we'll start off with Weather Zone here, which is a fantastic weather app um, that uh, works in conjunction with the Bureau of Meteorology here in Australia. And uh, we're going to hit Get Started. And um, now the first thing you're asked is whether you want it to follow your location or would you rather define a specific location and just monitor the weather at that particular place. Uh, now, I uh, personally prefer to have it follow me um, and uh, it'll ask whether you want to grant it access. Now, you have the option to allow the time, allow only when using the app or deny. Now, I often find that um, if you don't let it allow all the time, it won't really work because if unless you specifically open the app, it's not going to realize that you've traveled and uh, then it won't uh, give you the correct weather. So say allow all the time here. You can say allow only when using the app, um, but just expect it to not work very well. Um, from here, we can define our notifications. Um, I just want severe weather alerts, so I'll turn the rest off, but you can customize this to your uh, preferences. And you can also uh, sign in and create an account and all that sort of stuff if you like, but I'm just gonna hit let's go here. And uh, here we go, it's giving us a bit of info about the weather and we can see uh, we have our, our highs and lows and chance of rain, etc. That's all good and well. Tap on the menu in the top left and you can have a look at your weather radar. Uh, we'll go for dynamic radar and boom, there you go. You can see, uh, looks like there's some rain off the coast. Uh, you can zoom out, change your settings here, you can change the duration. Very, very cool, gives you lots of info. Uh, you can also go and look at uh, the forecast, observation history, and you can also see your tides and moon and all that sort of fun stuff as well. Uh, this is all very, very handy. But um, that's basically it with Weather Zone. Uh, moving on, we've got Google Maps, and um, you may have used this one before. Uh, it's a really, really great mapping application. Uh, you can also go in here, you can check your timeline. So if you wanna keep a, a record of where you've traveled, we use this a lot for work actually. Um, it's very handy. Um, and you can also set up you know, custom places and stuff and you can set your home and your work and all that sort of stuff too. Uh, it also works really well with Google Assistant, which I'll get to shortly. Uh, moving on, we've got the clock. Uh, so if you tap on that, uh, it'll take you into the clock. Uh, you can also set alarms. You can uh, add uh, different time zones. If you want to see a time zone from uh, somewhere else, you can have both both clocks here. I've got timer, stopwatch, and a bedtime reminder. All very neat, all very cool. And of course, uh, but you can always go into settings and there's some additional info there. Um, I've got camera. Now this is running Google camera and Google camera is pretty special. Uh, it has some very neat uh, image processing capabilities which can dramatically enhance dynamic, dynamic range and sharpness and contrast and whatnot. Um, now your device may just have the MIUI camera. I can't get Google camera to run on all devices reliably. So uh, this is very much a device dependent thing but this one in particular is running Google camera. Um, and uh, this is the main interface here. You can swap between front camera, you can see your gallery, you can switch to video. You've got a few other options here. 
Uh, you've got a portrait mode, which is really great if uh, you you know really want that uh, really strong depth of field. Kind of makes it look like a DSLR. Uh, night sight, which works really great at night time. Just make sure to keep it stable. Um, and then you can switch between your macro lens and wide angle lens. And um, yeah, all that works really well. You can also get some additional settings. There's a little, little, little arrow there, kind of hard to see. Um, you can change your flash here. I usually recommend leaving flash off. Even in dark uh, environments, it, the image processing is just amazing and it can really handle the, the dark quite well. I'd only recommend the flash if you really want to blow something up. Um, you know, maybe if you're taking something up, that's taking a photo of something that's kind of close, you just want to capture a lot of detail, like let's say a circuit board or something really detailed, um, then the flash is great. Or if it's really dark, then the flash is okay. Uh, HDR, keep that on um, enhanced. This is just going to ensure you get the best image quality. But I will mention that if you're taking photos of really fast moving stuff, you might want to move it just back down to on or you can turn off HDR completely, but you will reduce your image quality uh, substantially, which is um, not always ideal, but it's okay, of course, if you're if you're outside, there's good light, etc. It's probably not too bad. Um, auto white balance or AWB. Uh, I usually just leave this alone. Google auto white balance is fine. Um, and you can change a few other things here, but like timer, for example, I usually leave most of these things alone. Uh, the settings, uh, there's tons of stuff in here if you want to tinker, but I do kind of recommend leaving a lot of this in, alone. Um, if you do change something, just be wary of what it was set to before. Sometimes changing some of these settings can cause issues. Uh, if you, uh, you know, set things in a way that uh, push the, pushes the device beyond its limits. Uh, remember, this is a third party um, community developed app. Uh, it's not an official app. So, um, you know, your mileage may vary with, with tweaking things here. So I usually just leave things alone. Uh, but it has already been pre-configured um, for, for optimal um, performance based on feedback from the community. Uh, so that's the camera app, and that is going to be a lot of fun. Now, moving on to photos. So we have Google Photos on here, which is an awesome, awesome photo uh, app. Uh, and it's actually a full-blown service too. So I'll show you how this all works in a minute. We're going to hit Allow. And we're going to turn on backups for our test account here. So let's hit turn on backups. Now, by default, um, what's going to happen is at the moment you take a photo, it's going to back it up in its original quality, which is fine, but this is going to eat through your Google storage pretty quick. I would actually recommend moving this down to high quality. I highly doubt you'll notice a difference. Uh, it reduces image sizes down to 16 megapixels and video down to full high definition, which is still very, very good. And uh, I highly doubt that many people are going to notice any difference unless you're doing stuff professionally. Um, and I always recommend you can you can turn this on and check and, and you can pixel peep and look at the high quality versus original. Chances are you're not going to notice any difference. I have not noticed any difference, even on a fantastic camera like this one on the Poco X3. Um, so keep this on high quality unless you have very good reason uh, to not keep it on high quality. Uh, you can also turn on backups on mobile data. Uh, this is optional. If you have a lot of mobile data and you're okay with uh, using extra mobile data, this can be handy if you want to be able to share your photos straight away um, or, or have them accessible to others uh, straight away. That is neat, but um, I usually leave that off. Now, what that means is that uh, all your photos, and we'll just get through this little setup here. All your photos that you take will back up to your Google account. This means that uh, you can go to photos.google.com on your computer. And this actually applies to pretty much all Google services. So your contacts, your emails, your calendars, etc. You can all access um, from, from the Google webpage. Uh, you just either go, like for example, photos.google.com, contacts.google.com, calendar.google.com, etc. Uh, all your data will be there. And of course, uh, you can do sharing and uh, create albums and all of that will synchronize with your device because it's all linked on the same Google account. Now, one thing you probably also want to check out is uh, some of the, well, of course, you can create albums and share them that way, but um, you will want to go into photo settings. And if you do have a partner, 
set up partner sharing. This is a very neat feature so that if you take a photo or your partner takes a photo, you can see each other's libraries and uh, organize each other's albums and all this sort of stuff. Very neat, um, very handy. Uh, you can also uh, configure your notifications and face recognition, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, one other thing I, I do want to show you is the button here that says free up space. Uh, if you are running out of storage, let's say you're taking lots of photos on a trip, tap this button and any photos or videos that have been backed up to your account but still exist on the local storage, uh, they, will, they will be removed. Um, of course, the photos and videos will still be on your account. You'll be able to access them as long as you have internet, but uh, it frees up space on the, on the device, which is really awesome and um, a very neat thing to, to have there. So moving on, we have the Play Store. Now the Play Store is where you download your apps, uh, games, etc. cetera. Um, now you can pretty much just play around here. Uh, there's a heap of really great apps. Just be wary of <laughs> ads and in-app purchases and stuff like that. Um, I won't touch on that too much, but if you go into the menu here and you go to My Apps and Games, you'll be able to see this library button. So if you've, if you've installed apps in the past and you want to reinstall some of them right now, you can just go into there and then just hit install and uh, those will download and install to your device, uh, which is really neat. Now, of course, I only recommend installing what you need. Uh, this device will have a lot of other apps already on here, so you may not need, for example, the voice recorder. We already have an audio recorder on here, which is a bit better than that one. But um, anything you want to download, you can just hit install and then it will add it to your home screen automatically. And I'm just going to flick that one away since I don't actually want that there. But um, that is the Play Store. Uh, moving on, we have Facebook Messenger. Now, this is actually the light version of Facebook Messenger. Um, this consumes significantly fewer system resources. I find the, uh, the official Messenger app a little bit heavy. And I find the chat bubbles thing which is on by default to be really annoying. Um, I've seen it cause issues as well. So I, I really prefer this one because it's just lighter and simpler. Uh, up to you if you want to use this or not. You can, of course, go to the Play Store and search up the, uh, the full Messenger app and uh, grab that one if you really prefer. But uh, I would definitely give Messenger Lite a try. Um, if you don't use Facebook at all, by all means, just uninstall it. Um, or download WhatsApp or any other messaging platform instead. Um, but I know a lot of people use Facebook Messenger, even if they don't have a Facebook account, um, because it's so universal now. Uh, moving on, we've got uh, Setup Guide, and uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. It'll just take you to our webpage where you can view our guides. Uh, we've got the dialer at the bottom here. Uh, this is also fairly self-explanatory. You can dial numbers directly check out your call logs and uh, your contacts. Now, one quick thing with the contacts, tap on the name and it will actually call them direct. Tap on the icon and it will take you into the, uh, the info page here. Um, this is sort of consistent with most um, dialer apps. Some might have slightly different behavior, but that's the, the, the rule of thumb there. Um, and of course, you can uh, you can have some custom settings here and edit contacts and whatnot uh, from this app. Uh, of course, the contacts app will let you do the same sort of thing. Now, if you just tap on the name, it'll take you straight into the um, the contacts info, and and you can edit things from there. Uh, and that's all pretty straightforward. Uh, so moving on, we've got the Google Messages app. Now, this is a text messaging app. Uh, it will also support RCS, which is the next generation of messaging, which is due to be available in Australia within the next year or so, um, hopefully. Uh, and you can also do text messaging from a computer, which is really neat. So if you want to jump on the on a laptop to type out some messages, you can do it there. Uh, you can also replace the, the SMS app and many of these apps with third-party alternatives if you like. Just go into the Play Store. For example, if I search up SMS, you can install an alternative like Pulse SMS and uh, replace the, the, the standard Google one. Um, Pulse SMS has a few extra features and uh, is a bit more uh, flexible when it comes to, to messaging on other devices as well. You can have a sync between a, a tablet, for example, 
Um, so play around if, if needed, but Google Messages is nice and simple. Uh, we've got the Gmail app here. Now, uh, this is also very straightforward and uh, really the only thing you might want to check out is just go into the settings and just make sure you set your signature uh, because by default it doesn't bring your signature over from your gmail.com interface um, and uh, that's pretty much all you need to know there. Uh, Google Chrome, uh, so that is your browser. Hit accept and continue and uh, it'll synchronize your your history, your bookmarks, passwords, etc., from uh, your your desktop or laptop, and you can also go into bookmarks here, go back, and then you can see your bookmarks bar from from your computer, which is really great. Uh, now, right at the bottom, we have the Google search bar. Uh, tap on the middle of the Google icon, and you can just go straight into typing a search, uh, or you can tap on the icon on the right here. And this will do a voice search and you have all sorts of functionality. I'm just going to hit back here. Uh, if you say, OK, Google, uh, it'll give you a bit of a, oh, it used to, <laughs> it used, it used to give you a bit of a, like an intro, um, but that's OK. We're going to go hit get started on assistant and I do recommend you set this up. This is just going to uh, allow you to use the, the uh, hot, what do they call it, a hot word or something? so that you can uh, you can activate it with just your voice. So I'm gonna hit continue here. Hey Google. Oh, oh, hang on a sec. Hey Google. Oh, I've already set up this before. All right, so I don't have to do this. But normally you just say, hey Google three times and um, you, you can activate it. And I'll show you that in a sec. I'll just say, I agree to this. I'm fine with uh, lock screen results too. Review this at your own leisure. I'm just sort of flying through this here. Uh, okay, next. Okay, so now if I say, hey Google. Oh, this is embarrassing. Hey Google. Okay, Google. Seriously? Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Hey, Google. Hey, Google. Okay, I think that's what I needed to do there. So that should now recognize my voice. It doesn't always work straight away, but it, it will work. Hey, Google. There we go. Okay, uh, I, think, I think it might have been uh, trained to someone else's voice. Because uh, this is just a test account and uh, we use it for testing. Okay, so moving on to the next page here. So we have the calendar widget at the top. Tap on that and it'll take you into your calendar. Uh, much like the actual calendar app, same thing. Not everyone immediately re recognizes that you can actually tap on this. So I have the icon there too. But uh, there's really nothing to say about the calendar app. It's really simple. Tap on it. You can add events. Um, you can... Add, add repeating events, video conferencing, all that sort of stuff. Very cool. Uh, Google Tasks. So this is a simple task manager by Google. And um, there really isn't a ton to say about this. Uh, just, um, you know, have a play around. There's a few little settings that you might want to adjust. Uh, but there really isn't much. You just add tasks, add due dates, and it'll remind you. Um, Moving on to Google Keep or Keep Notes as it comes up here. I use this app a ton. It is awesome. It is a, just a very simple note-taking app, but um, I just use it for pretty much everything I need to remember. Or if I need to do a little little list, a shopping list, like as you can see, I've drawn something to, to demonstrate something in the past. Um, I can just uh, archive this now. Boom. Here's some other... Uh, random things here, turn on sync. And of course you can access these notes from your um, from your computer as well. You go to keep.google.com and all your notes are there. You can also do voice notes too. So if I type in, well actually I'm not typing, but if I talk into the phone, it's going to do both a dictation uh, where I can listen to the actual voice 
and it's also going to transcribe it into text as well and then save it into a note, which is a very, very cool feature. And boom, it's not perfect, but uh, this can be very handy if, uh, if you just need to save some audio. Um, you can, of course, do drawings. You can uh, do pretty much whatever you want here. It's a very, very neat app, and I do recommend having a play around with that one, uh, especially if uh, you are very good at forgetting things like me. Uh, moving on, we have the audio recorder. This is also pretty self-explanatory. Uh, a few things here. I do recommend M4A 44.1. And 96 is what I normally go for, but if you really want good quality, go for 192 and uh, stereo, um, hit apply. And uh, this is all pretty straightforward for recording audio. Hit stop, save, give it a name, and that saves it into the local device. Now I do recommend if, uh, if you do wanna make sure those uh, audio recordings get kept, make sure you upload that to Google Drive and I'll show you Google Drive in a second. Moving on to the entertainment folder. I won't go into all of these, but I will explain what all of them do. FM radio, pretty self-explanatory. Tune in radio. This is like FM radio, but it's an internet radio. So you can listen to any radio in the world as long as you have internet. FM radio is like plain old FM radio. Um, I use tune in quite a bit. Uh, podcasts, this is Google Podcasts. So if you want to listen to any podcasts, um, popular ones, they're all available there. Uh, Spotify, uh, you've probably heard of Spotify, it's a music player, can also do podcasts, um, that's a very, very neat uh, platform, very popular now, um, they've got a free version uh, that's ad supported, or you can uh, pay a uh, around $10 a month to have unlimited uh, music access to pretty much any song in the world, which is pretty awesome. YouTube Music is Google's uh, competitor to Spotify, and it does many of the same things, except it has... I would say slightly better, um, I'm not sure what you describe it, but it, it, it does a good, really good job at uh, sort of predicting what sort of music you like. And um, it's worth checking out. Uh, you may find that you just use one of these two and you can uninstall one, um, but uh, yeah, both, both very, very good. Uh, moving on, we've got vinyl. Vinyl is just a very simple audio player for any local music. So if you have music on a memory card or if you have downloaded music, uh, vinyl is where you use to play it back. It's also used to play back recordings and voice messages and stuff like that. If someone sends you one via email, um, so that's a handy one to have. Don't don't uninstall that one, please, because um, you might uh, break functionality with uh, with audio recordings. YouTube, um, I think you probably know what YouTube is. It's probably what you're watching this video on right now. Um, Me Remote, that is the remote control app for the uh, IR Blaster. This little guy here. So um, that's so you can control TVs, air conditioners, etc. Uh, moving on, we've got the QR code scanner. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, just scan a barcode, got your flashlight, got your history. You can also enable dark mode and auto open and vibrate and beep and all that. Uh, calculator, it's uh, just a calculator. Uh, if you really want um, the ability to convert units, uh, do a search for all-in-one calculator on the Play Store. And that has uh, all the extra functions on top of the regular calculator. Uh, Google Drive. So Google Drive is like your document storage on Google, uh, on your Google account, should I say. Uh, Drive.google.com is where you'd access that on the computer. Um, and you can actually upload files uh, to your Google Drive from here as well. So if you have an audio recording like we just saved earlier, I can go to recent audio. Oh, okay, hang on a sec. Did I actually save it? I may not have saved it. Um, if I did, it would appear, <laughs> yeah, I don't think I saved it. I can show the internal storage and have a dig though. Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't save the recording. Otherwise it would appear. Um, yeah, but if you did have it, you could just upload a file uh, to your Google drive and, um, and that way, uh, you'd be able to access that from your computer security and finance. This is a pretty important folder. Uh, so there's four apps in here. Now the uh, Authenticator app is a two-factor authentication system. Now this is what you'd use if you have a two-factor setup on an account. Um, now this is LastPass Authenticator, so LastPass is a password manager, and uh, this will just ensure that those codes uh, get backed up to your LastPass account as well. 
very simple app um, and uh, essentially you just scan a barcode that's provided to you by a, um, a website that you're setting up two-factor authentication on and um, you can add that to your to your LastPass authenticator. Now LastPass is your password manager. This is an awesome, awesome app. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, and not just, I mean, LastPass is great, but uh, if you if you prefer a different password manager like Bitwarden or um, Dashlane, by all means use that. Uh, but I just can't emphasize enough, using a password manager will save you so much stress and uh, it will save you so much hassle uh, if you ever need to set up accounts or change passwords or uh, it, it even just hits you up if uh, you know your, your passwords are being reused too much um, and it just uh, it just prevents so much I would say agony because uh, especially in this day and age we just have to have so many accounts for different things and you can't reuse the same password everything you will get in trouble for doing that you know there's going to be a security breach and uh, you will get compromised and it's not really like a if it's more like when at this point um, so yeah please please set up a password manager even if it's not LastPass I just recommend LastPass because it's really simple and free but um, definitely get that set up uh, Blockada is the ad blocker and uh, we currently have that deactivated so I'm going to turn that on it's going to actually function as like a VPN that functions within itself, but it filters out ads. Um, there might be an update available. Just hit the, the update button there to let that happen and uh, any updates will run. But this is a really, really awesome app to stop a lot of pop-up ads, banner ads, etc. cetera. Um, if it ever breaks something, you can always turn it off and then turn it back on afterwards. Uh, I'm just installing this update. But um, Blockada is a really, really awesome ad blocking app that I highly recommend everyone have enabled. Uh, I believe it is normally enabled by default. I just turned it off so I could show you how that works. Um, okay, uh, last one in the security and finance folder is Google Pay. So if your device has near field communication or NFC, like this one does, you can set up Google Pay um, so that you can add your credit card or debit card from your bank and pay at FPOS terminals with your phone. Very, very cool. Uh, I'm not obviously not gonna go through that right now. It's very simple though, uh, so give that a play. Uh, get it, uh, and uh, see if uh, that works for you. Moving on to the system folder, we have lawn chair settings. This is, I think I briefly touched on this earlier. These are all the settings for the launcher. One thing I didn't touch on though, is the backup and restore functionality. Now, uh, we provide two different configurations here. We have a Microsoft and a Google um, config. So if you're the sort of person who uses Microsoft services, like if you use Microsoft 365 for business and you use Google for personal as well, select the Microsoft one from the backup and restore and that's going to restore a custom configuration with all the Microsoft apps. And you'll see in a second that it's completely changed our layout. We now have Microsoft Edge in there as well. Um, and it's changed a few things, uh, but I'm just gonna go back in, restore our Google one. But use, use the Microsoft one if you use Microsoft services. Okay, cool, done. Now we're back to where we were. Um, settings, well, we know how to get into that. I showed you that earlier by swiping down, but it's also in the system folder if you need that. Uh, missed notifications reminder. Not everyone actually needs this, but um, this is a really, really neat app if you are the sort of person who doesn't carry their phone around with them all the time and you do receive a lot of important messages. Uh, you can configure this so that um, your uh, notifications will continuously repeat, you know, once every five minutes or 10 minutes or so until you acknowledge it. Um, this, this is quite handy uh, for those people who can't really miss uh, important messages. Uh, so it, it, there is a little bit of setup here and I'm just sort of breezing through it. You can rewind if you didn't see what I did here, but um, you basically just need to follow the prompts and I'm just gonna set missed notifications a reminder as don't optimize so that it runs in the background and it's happy and we can change our reminder interval here. And you can say max repetitions. Like 10 times or whatever, or eight times. 
um, and you can set it for specific applications. But this is a very, very cool app. Um, you might not need this. You can uninstall it if you don't. Um, but anyway, that's missed notifications reminder. Uh, moving on, we got wallpapers. I probably will just let you have a play with that. Pretty straightforward. Uh, files, so if you want to organize, delete, clean up junk, you can use uh, the files app to, uh, to look at everything and um, organize stuff. Uh, not much to say here. You can also share stuff through the Google Files app uh, with other people who have the Google Files app. So if you just want to share, like say a video with someone very quickly on like an airplane when you don't have Wi-Fi, internet, whatever, that, that's handy, but I very rarely use it um, when uh, messaging apps are so good now and Google Drive is so good and Google Photos is so good. Um, but uh, that's, that's a neat little app for, for that. Oh, and of course, you can, of course, browse your internal storage directly. You can see your folders, organize things, rename things, delete things, etc. cetera. Uh, moving on, SMS backup and restore. Now, the, the built-in backup system in Android does support SMS backups, but I find it a little bit inconsistent. And if you're the sort of person where text messages are really important, I highly recommend setting this up anyway. Um, Especially if MMS are important. I find that uh, the Google backup system doesn't handle MMS super well. But uh, here you can set a backup. It's pretty self-explanatory. I do also have a guide on this. Um, you may want to restore a backup before you start. But um, just make sure they back up to Google Drive or any other cloud storage and you should be fine. And lastly, we have Google One. And this is a very simple app to give you an idea of your Google storage. Um, you can you can configure your data backups and uh, you can also free up account storage if you say for example have it uh, have let's say a lot of original quality photos and Google photos taking up tons of space you can get some of that space back but this is really it's more like an account overview for your Google account and there's not really a ton to say here uh, but that pretty much wraps it up that's all the apps on here um, if you have any further questions or queries or if you want to leave a comment please uh, you can leave that below um, otherwise give us a like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for future content thanks for watching